Hello, I'm Will. I'm here with Mike. We're the Tabletop Donkeys. Hello. And today we've got for you issue 52 of Warhammer 40,000 Conquest. Uh, this issue comes with another pot of Astro Granite texture paint. And as always, if you want to skip straight ahead to the battle report, then there's a time code in the description below. And heading into the issue, we've got something of Mantles of Corruption. Uh, I think it's supposed to say Mantles, because it does elsewhere in the paragraph. But anyway, a Mantle of Corruption is something bestowed on Martarian to the Death Guard Lords, and apparently there are different ones depending on the role of the Lord. The only one we know about in here is the Lord of Contagion, which is the only one that there is a model for at the moment, as you can see there, obviously. Then we've got some stuff about Space Marine Tactical Squads, which are not Primaris Marines, they are old Marines, and have a slightly different organisation as such, so it just describes how a tactical squad is set up and kind of guns it can take. Then we have more information about the Iron Hands chapter, continuing our look at the first founding legions of the Space Marines. The Iron Hands in, enjoy their bionics, and Battle Cry being the flesh is weak. Then we have some stuff here about the Master of Sanctity, Orton Cassius, who is the senior chaplain of the Ultramarines. And in his younger days, as you can see his model here, he was, uh, he was in the Death Watch and then later on became a sort of specialist Tyranid hunter. Death Guard Land Raiders, which are just Space Marine Land Raiders, but all Nerglified. There's actually a couple of example, named examples here, which are both Mark IIb Land Raiders, which is a Forge World resin kit that you can get. Then more Chronicles of Blood, which is the history of the Blood Angels chapter. We've got all sorts of different chapters in this week's issue. Then our painting guide this week is for how to improve the look of our bases. So previously they've just been telling us to put Astro Granite on them, but now there are some different ways to do it for different kind of environments. So it involves basically a wash and a dry brush, but a different one. So we've got a muddy mire, shade it with Agrax Earthshade, and then dry brush it Rakarth Flesh. Then there's a swamp one using our Athenian Camacho and our green paints, and then the city ruins, which is what roughly what uh, we've done for our models, which is wash them with Nolan Oil and then dry brush them with grey. And there we go, there's a description of the steps there. And that'll be it for this issue's overview. We'll get on to our battle now. So before we get into the, our mission for this issue, we have a bunch of new stratagems to learn about. So we've got the Space Marines ones here. We've got five new ones. First up we have Death to the Traitors. This essentially gives a Space Marine unit in the flight phase a uh, Death to the False Emperor, essentially. So if you roll a six when, when making a melee attack roll, you get to roll an extra attack. Create extra hits, but that only applies against Heretic Astartes units. And we have Signs of Gilliman. So this is actually an Ultramarine stratagem, so other chapters normally can't use it. But since the Silver Templars are an Ultramarine successor, they technically can use it as well. But this allows a Ultramarines, or Silver Templars in our case, infantry or biker unit, reroll all attack rolls of one in either the uh, shooting phase or the fight phase. And if it's a intercessor squad or a tactical squad, they reroll all fell hit rolls instead. Then we have Hellfire Shells, it's an Adeptus Astartes infantry unit with a heavy bolt to it. Instead of making his normal three attacks, he makes a single attack. And if it hits, it does D3 mortal wounds, so no need to roll to wound either. We have Armor of Contempt, this gives a vehicle a 5 plus 2 and a pain essentially against mortal wounds. And then Wisdom of the Ancients, this gives a Dreadnought the Captain's ability to reroll hit rolls of 1. So it turns him into a Captain for a phase, so either the shooting phase or the fight phase. And here you have some examples, so Death to the Traitors there and Hellfire Shells there. So here in Death to the Traitors they actually use the Aggressors as an example, and technically they cannot trigger Death to the Traitors because they have minus 1 to hit from their Bolt Storm Gauntlets. So that takes their roll of 6 down to a 5, so it shouldn't trigger. Same reason why the Power Fist on the Death Guard Champion, the Plague Marine Champion, doesn't trigger Death of the False Emperor. And here we have the Death Guard Stratagems for this week, five new ones for them as well. We have the Chaos Familiar of Nose. this allows a Psyker to change one of his Psychic Powers during the game. Blasphemous Machines allows a vehicle to allows a vehicle to ignore the penalty for moving and shooting a heavy weapon or advancing and firing assault weapons. The only vehicle this will really apply to is the Plague Burst Crawler. Then we have the Dead Walk again. What this does is you use it on a, you, in the movement phase, you use it on a squad of Pox Walkers, and it replaces their Curse of the Walking Pox ability with one that makes it so that any any infantry model within seven inches of the Pox unit that dies adds a Pox Walker to the unit. Then we have Putrid Detonation, so this is when a vehicle is destroyed, you, roll, you don't roll a dice to see if it explodes, it just explodes. Cloud of Flies, we use it in the movement phase, you pick an infantry unit, and uh, enemy units cannot shoot at it unless it's the closest visible, visible target. So effectively, this is if they were shooting at a character. And again, you have some examples here of the Dead Walk again, and Cloud of Flies. But now we can finally get on to our mission for this issue. The Space Marines and the Death Guard are fighting over the Docklands at Kalon. As you can see here, we have our battlefield. So you can see we have the Death Guard deployment over here. 
And the space marine deployment is near the hematrope reactor, same as it is with the last issue, but we have three cargo containers deployed on the map, which are objectives to this mission. And you can see here we roll off for deployment, and then we alternate deploying, beginning with the player chosen to deploy first. After all units have deployed, the player who finished setting up can choose to take the first or second turn. Uh, victory conditions, so you get one victory point for Slay the Warlord essentially, and two victory points for holding the for cargo container you hold at the end of the game. And obviously you hold a cargo container if you have the most models within three inches of it at the end of the game, and the game lasts for about battle rounds. Like last time, we have three command points each. So we'll do a quick fly over the battlefield so you can see the cargo containers, then we'll get into the army overviews and rolling off for deployment. So here you can see the, the positions of the cargo containers. So we've got the Space Marine deployment zone down here in the bottom left, and there's a container up here in the top, the top left, one in the middle, and one down here in the bottom right, and the Death Guard deployment zone over there in the top right. So here's our Space Marine army for this mission. We have the Primaris Chaplain, three Hellblasters, the Redemptor Dreadnought, five Intercessors and five Reavers. So obviously the Chaplain is going to be my Warlord and I'm going to give him the Storm of Fire trait as usual because it works pretty well. And here's our Death Guard army for this mission. So we have a Lord of Contagion and uh, you've gone for Gangrus here, 12 Poxwalkers, 10 Chaos Cultists, the Plague Burst Crawler and seven Plague Marines. And the Plague Burst Crawler there you see has the Entropy Cannons and the Heavy Slugger. And my warlord will be Lord Gangrus, obviously, and he's going to have Revoltingly Resilient, which is 4 plus, disgustingly resilient, except against mortal wounds. So we're going to roll off for deployment, see who deploys first, who chooses to deploy first. So yeah, I will choose to deploy first, because that will mean I get to choose who goes first or second. So for my first deployment, I pick the Intercessors, and I've deployed them here along the edge of my deployment zone. And for my first choice, we're going to take Lord Gangrus and put him in the Portarium. So my second pick is going to be the three Hellblasters, which I've deployed just behind the Intercessors. And then my second pick is these Cultists, who are going to go down here. And my third pick is going to be the Reavers, who I've deployed down here along the edge of my deployment zone. And my third deployment will be the Plague Burst Crawler, which is going to go right in the corner. My fourth deployment will be the Chaplain, which I'm just going to put behind all the Truppen. And I've put all the Poxwalkers down in front of the Cultists. And my final deployment will be the Dreadnought which I'll put just behind my front line there. And then finally for me is the Plague Marines and they're getting there. So since I've finished deploying first, I get to choose who goes first or second, and I will choose to go first, so we'll head into Space Marines turn one. So my movement phase, the Intercessors, the Hellblasters and the Dreadnought have all moved up normally like that. Then the Reavers and the Chaplain are going to advance, so I'll do the Reavers first. They get to move an extra five inches, so 11, and I'll roll for the Chaplain right now. He gets to move an extra one inch, so he gets to go seven. So there you can see the Reavers have moved up their 11 inches to be by the crate in the middle of the board. The Chaplain's moved up his seven, and he's within six inches of all of my models for Storm of Fire. So it's on to the shooting phase. So in my shooting phase, I'm not going to use the um, Wisdom of the Ancient stratagem to allow units within six inches of the Dreadnought reroll ones, because it's not that much fire going to be going at the Death Guard this turn. We're going to start with the Hell Blasters, and they're going to shoot at the Plague Marines. We're not going to overcharge, so we've got three shots hitting on threes. Only one hit. Wounds on a three. It did. I don't get an armor safe, so we just switch to discuss the new museum. There you go. And I'll take this one off the end, because some of the intercessors can't see him, so... Yeah. So I'll do the intercessors next. They're also going to shoot at the Plague Marines, and they can all see one. So you've got five shots hitting on threes. Three hits. Wounding on fives. There's one, but it's AP minus two. So five plus armor, I made it. And then I'll do the Dreadnought, who's also going to shoot at the Plague Marines. So I've got 12 shots hitting on fours, because we moved and it's a heavy weapon. And that's a lot of ones and twos and threes. That's three hits. Wounding on fours. Two wounds. Uh, then minus one, so four plus armor. Made one, failed one. Disgusting resilience. Made it. That's the end of my shooting with one dead plague marine. And that will be the end of my turn because we're far too far away to charge, so it's on to Death Guard, turn one. First thing that I'm going to do in my movement phase is advance with the pox walkers. So rolling that, two inches, they can use six. That gets them all spread out like that. The cultists have moved to there as well, they've just moved normally so they can still shoot. And the plague marines are going to advance because they're not quite in range. So they go an extra five. So the plague marines get to there. Um, and the Plague Burst Crawler has moved up. It didn't have quite enough movement to get within two inches of the ammo box, so I've left it a little bit behind. 
And uh, if I were to play the Cloud of Flies, Flies strategy, I might have to use it in my movement phase. But I'm not going to because the Plague Marines are the unit I play on. And they're further forward than anyone else at the moment. And then at the end of my movement phase, Lord Gangrus has come in from teleport right there. So I'll start my shooting phase with the uh, cultists, with their auto guns, so they're not in rapid fire range. Yeah, they're going to shoot the Reavers. Yeah, they're going to shoot the Reavers, and they've only got six shots, and they're hitting on fours. Uh, got two hits, and they're on fives. That's a wound. Three plus on a save. Made it. I'm going to shoot with the Plague Bus Corps, and I'm going to play Blasphemous Machines. That's one strategy, uh, that's one command point, and it means it ignores the penalty for moving and shooting, so it won't be hitting on fives. And they use up a command point. And it's shooting at the Dreadnought. Okay. Oh, actually, no, I'll shoot, actually, I'll shoot the Slugger at the um, Hell Blasters, I suppose, actually. So. Mortar and the Entropy Cannons go into the Dreadnought, and the Heavy Slugger going into the Hell Blasters. Yep, yeah, I'll start with the Entropy Cannons. Two, two shots hitting on fours, because it, because I ignore the movement. Oh, double one. Yeah. Oof, good job you haven't got to reroll ones. D6 shots from the Mortar. Five. Ugh. That's alright. It also hitting on fours. Uh, these will be wounding on threes, because it's strength eight. Uh, they're all wounded, and it's AP minus two. So five plus armor saves from the Dreadnought. Ooh, made one, so it's two D3 damage. Uh, four. So the Dreadnought is down to nine wounds. And then the Heavy Slugger at the Hell Blasters on fours. That's two hits. Wounding on threes, it's a strength five. That's two wounds, and it's AP minus one. Four plus armor saves. Made one failed one, so Hell Blaster takes a wound. And put it on this guy. And the Plague Marines will also shoot the Hell Blasters. It'll just be the two Blight Launchers, because they advanced. Being Death Guard, they ignore the minus for shooting, uh, moving shooting assault weapons. So hitting on threes, we're rolling ones. Mm. Two ones. Turns into three hits. Moving on threes, we're rolling ones. So that's three wounds. Three five plus armor saves. No. Made two. So that just kills the wounded yeah, guy. So the wounded man goes down. <clears throat> so that'll be it for my shooting. I'm not going to declare a charge with Lord Gangrus, because if he makes it, then he'll be out on by himself. Uh, and he's worth a victory point. So I'm going to end my turn there. So that's the end of Death Guard turn one, on to Space Marines turn two. So here I've done all my movement, We've the Reavers have fallen back a little bit, we can uh, get this objective later. We're just going to form a big blob around the Chaplain and the Dreadnought, and then it'll be on to the shooting phase. And at the start of the phase I'm going to use the Wisdom of the Ancient stratagem, so now friendly models within six inches of the Dreadnought gets to re-roll ones to hit. So I'll start with the Intercessors, they're going to shoot at the Plague Marines, and they're all within 15 inches. 10 shots hitting on threes, we're rolling ones because of the Dreadnought. And that one. Wow, Oof. that's pretty good. Roll those fives and sixes again, that's 10 hits. Four wounds, so there's one at AP minus one and three at AP minus two. Well, let's do AP minus one first, that's failed. And then these ones are five plus. Yep. Made two, so that's two wounds going through, and I haven't ignored either. We'll lose these two bolt guns from the back. And next we'll do the Dreadnought, I think. It moved up, so it's frag assault launchers are going to be in range, so I'll start with them. So we've got 2d6 shots, 10. 10 shots hitting on threes, re-rolling ones. Turns into nine hits. So we've got nine hits, wounding on fives. There's three wounds there, there's one three plus armor save and two four plus armor saves. And I'll do the three plus first. <laughs> Failed that, and I'm just going to use it on it. Nope, so take out this one. Yep, but I'm going to do these one at a time because one guy's currently out of cover, so it might make a difference. Failed that, and it's going to seem resilient. Yep. Kill the champion then if you can. No, I'm not going to kill the champion actually. No, I'm going to get rid of the black launcher, so the other one won't. I won't get cover for this one either. Failed that as well. Oh. And he dies. So it is just the champion. So that's yeah. five dead plague marines. Yeah. So I forgot to declare, I, you're supposed to declare your shooting at the start before you begin rolling any dice, and since I didn't declare otherwise, uh, the heavy onslaught Gatling cannon is also going to go into the plague marines. So the heavy onslaught Gatling cannon has 12 shots, hitting on fours because we moved, we're re rolling ones. Look at all them ones. And re rolling because of himself, nine hits in total. Wait, eight hits in total, sorry. Wounding on fours, so that's three four plus armor saves and one five plus armor save. Four pluses, and failed two, and oh, he dies, so he yeah. on four. So that's the Plague Marines wiped out. Yep. So the only other unit I have left in range are the two remaining Hell Blasters. So this man, the regular man, is going to shoot at Gangrus, and the other man can only see the Plague Burst Crawler, so he'll shoot at that. 
So we are going to supercharge because we've got rerolling ones from the dreadnought. So I'll do the regular man shooting at Gangris, two shots on threes. We will reroll that one into a hit, so that's one hit. Wounds on a three, get wounded. Uh, he gets his four plus invulnerable save, he makes it. Yeah. And then the one shot from the sergeant at the plague burst crawler hits on a three, it hit. Wounds on a four because it's toughness eight. Yep. He wounded. It's AP minus five, not that yeah, it matters. But it has a five plus invulnerable save. It has a five plus invulnerable save, which it fails, so and it takes two damage potentially. It does. So the plague burst crawler is down to ten wounds. And that'll be the end of my turn, because we're not going to carry any charges, so it's on to Death Guard turn two. Well, Gangrus has moved to there, here's mighty four inches. Mm -hmm. Then I will advance with the Poxwalkers. Three extra inches. So that brings the Poxwalkers up to here, and then the Cultists have moved normally again, and the Plague Burst Crawler has moved over to here. So it will shoot everything at the Dreadnought, and I am going to use Blasphemous Machines again, so it's not hitting on fives. Yes, so that's another command point used. So the Entropy Cannons on fours, this time re-rolling ones. Still roll a one. Oh, oh. D6 shots. D6 one. shots from there. There's only two this time. Hitting on fours. Re rolling ones. Nope. Oh, the dreadnought lives a charmed life. And the heavy slugger gets a hit. More and more ones to re roll. Oh, three oh. hits. Uh, it's winning on fives though. Well, that's one. Maybe minus one. Four plus armor save for the dreadnought, which I failed. So the dreadnought's down to eight wounds. And the cultists will shoot the reavers. The front three are in rapid fire range. So there'll be nine shots in total on the fours. That's three hits. Moving on fives. Nothing. Then in my charge phase, Lord Gangrus will charge the reavers. Yeah, they definitely can't see him, so no watch. No, it's going to be an eight inch charge. Oh, I made it with a nine. Oh, he's in. So that brings him to here. He's not within three inches of the chaplain, so you don't get to hurriedly intervene. And mm. then he gets to fight. He's mm -hmm. not going to pile in. He's going to stay near the objective. Right. So he has four, atta four attacks hitting on twos. Three hits, but one death of the False Emperor. So that's four hits. Wounding on threes, three rolling ones. That's a two, so that's a one. So three wounds. Three six plus armor saves. Yep. Uh, fair roll of them, and they're three damage each, so three Reavers go down. Yep. So you can wear the three at the back. Oh no, one was the sergeant, so I won't take him away. And the Reavers go to fight back. Seven attacks. Here's you on threes, we're rolling everything. I'm not going to use um, death to the traitors or anything like that. Good thing you can re-roll those there. Turns into six hits. Wounding on fives. It's only one wound. Two plus armor. Made it. <laughs> so that'll be, yeah, no morale test for the Reavers because the leadership nine. So that'll be the end of Death Guard turn two. On to Space Marines turn three. So here I've completed my movement. The Reavers have fallen back out of combat. The Chaplain and the Dreadnought have moved up to get close to Gangrus, and the Intercessors and Hellblasters have moved to consolidate the position on that objective. So it's on to the shooting phase. I will use the Wisdom of the Ancients again, so we can reroll ones to hit. I will start with the Hellblasters, and they're going to shoot at Gangrus. And we are going to overcharge, so we've got two shots from the regular Hellblaster, hitting on threes, that's two hits. And the Sergeant, rerolling the one. Two hits as well, so it's four hits. Wounding on threes. Three wounds. Three four plus invulnerable saves. Made two, failed one. Yeah, I'll take take the two damage, so disgustingly resilient. Oh, that's, that is it's two. on fours, but that's two damage. Yeah. So Gangrus is down to four wounds. Next, the intercessors will shoot at him as well. Yeah, so the man in front there is in range for a crack grenade, so he'll throw one, and then we've got four bolt rifles. So we've got the crack grenade hitting on the three rolling ones. It hit. Wounds on a three. It's wounded. AP on this one. Oh, fail. D3 damage, unless you wanted to re-roll it. No. D3 damage, three. Uh, it takes two more. Mm -hmm. Down to two wounds. And then eight bot rifle shots from the remaining intercessors. Hitting on threes, rolling ones. A couple of twos in there, five hits. Wounding on fives. One wound. Eight minus one, so I've made that one. Uh, then the Dreadnought will shoot all of its weapons at Gangrus. So I'll do the Heavy Flamer first. D6 automatic hits, six. Wounding on fours, yeah, so five. Three wounds, that's two at AP minus two. So it's one three plus and two four plus. So the three plus I've made, and the two four pluses failed both. Yeah, I'll take the Disgusting Resilient on it. Ignored one, so he's down to one. I'm gonna re-roll it. I'm gonna re-roll that Disgusting Resilient with a command point. Okay. So I have command points. No, I've still failed it. So he's down to one wound. And then I'll do the frag storm grenade launchers, 2d6 shots, 7. Hitting on 3s, you're rolling 1s. Mm. 4 hits. 
wounding on fives. There's one wound at 80 minus one, so three plus. He's made that. And then heavy onslaught gatling cannon has 12 shots hitting on fours because he moves, but re rolling ones. Re rolling the two ones. So that's going to be seven hits. Wounding on fours. So that's five, four wounds at 80 minus one. So three pluses, failed one. Discussing usually up on four plus. Nope. So Gangrus dies after a hail of fire. Uh, that's Slay the Warlord, so that's a victory point. Yeah. But that will be the end of my turn, because the Champion and Reavers have nothing to shoot at, and then I'm too far away to charge, so it's on to Death Guard turn three. Well, in my movement phase, uh, the Parks Walkers will advance, I suppose, because I don't want to charge me into the Dreadnought, so they can go eight inches. So the Parks Walkers get to there, and they're all hidden behind the box at the moment. Mm -hmm. And the Cultists have moved up like that, some one guy gone on top of the box to shoot the Storm Bolter, and uh, the Plague Burst Crawler is going to stay where it is. We're going to shoot with the Plague Burst Crawler first. It's going to shoot... Um, we're going to put the two entropy cannons into the Dreadnought, and we're going to put the Plague Burst Mortar into the Hellbars. No, we're going to put it into the Intercessors. Okay. I'm just going to have to hope I roll well. Mm. And the Heavy Slower into the Intercessors as well. Yep. So we do the two entropy cannons. We've got four sort of re-rolling ones. I've got a hit at last. Yay. Wounds on a three. Yep. No armor save. No armor save, so D6 damage. Six. Oh, down to two wounds for the Dreadnought. Then the Plague Burst Mortar at the Intercessors. Gets four shots. Fours, we're rolling ones, that's a one. Three hits, wounding on twos because it's strength eight. We roll ones because it's a plague weapon. No, nope. two wounds. Made two. Five plus armor saves. Made one, third one. D3 damage, kills an intercessor. So one intercessor will die. Should we that man there? Then the heavy slugger at the same target. Fours, three rolling ones. It's two hits. Threes, one wound. Four plus armor save. Made and then the cultists get to shoot uh, these three auto guns here. Can see the reavers, so they'll shoot them. They're within rapid fire range. Yep. The storm bolter on top uh, will also shoot the reavers, and these two auto guns cannot see them, so they'll shoot the hellblasters because they can see the sergeant over there. So we'll start with the two shots on the hellblasters on fours. That's a hit and oh, wound. Three plus armor saves for the hellblasters. Made it. Six auto gun shots at the reavers Hit on fours. Mm. Okay. Two hits, wounding on fives. That's a wound. Three plus armor save. Made it. Yeah. And then the Storm Bolter. Now, it is within 18 inches, but we're not sure whether Inexorable Advance applies to it because it isn't technically a weapon that the cultists have. Yeah. It's just on a building. And it is a rap but it is a rapid fire weapon. But it is a rapid fire weapon. So what we're going to do is roll a dice. On a 4+, plus, it does get to shoot twice as many shots, in other words. It does. So yeah, yeah. We're not sure whether there's an actual answer to that, but if you happen yeah, to you, know it, leave a comment. Yeah, if you know the answer to that, leave a comment. <laughs> anyway, so for the moment, four shots hitting on fours. Ooh, three Ross. hits. Wounding on fours. Three wounds. Ross. Three plus armor saves. Made a one. And then um, the Pox Walkers advance, they can't charge, so that will be the end of my turn. Okay, so it's on to Space Marines turn four. So I've finished my movement. The Hellblasters have shuffled around a bit so they can both see the Plague Burst Crawler, but still with them, remain within six inches of the Dreadnought. And the Dreadnought's going to stay where it is, otherwise it will never hit anything with its guns. The Intercessors have moved up so they can see these cultists. The Reavers and the Chaplain have moved around so that we can get to charge the Pox Walkers. That will be on to the shooting phase, and I will once again use Wisdom of the Ancients. So I'll start with the Intercessors, they're going to shoot at the Cultists. They are all within rapid fire range, so we've got 8 shots hitting on 3s, you're on 1s. On 1s turns into 8 hits. Wounding on 3s. 4 yeah, wounds. 4 wounds. So that's 4 dead Cultists. Yes, because they don't get an arm saving against that. I'll take away 3 pit melee people who aren't the champion. And do the Hell Blasters next. They're just going to shoot at the Plague Burst Crawler. Uh, they might as well overcharge because we are within range of the Dreadnought. And there's extra damage, so first one gets a hit. Second one gets a hit. Wounding on fours. That's one wound. Five plus invulnerable save. Nope. Two damage, so... And disgusting you resilient. Nope, takes another two. So it's down to six. No, sorry, eight. Down to eight, sorry. Down to eight, but it's still, in, it's still not in... It's, yeah, it's got... Still in its highest bracket. Yeah, the Reavers, one will throw a shot grenade at the Poxwalkers and the other will fire his pistol at the Cultists. So you've got shot grenade, D3 shots, three, hitting on three, re-rolling ones. Yeah, it hit. And then the pistol hits, wounds on three, it didn't wound. Chaplain will throw a frag grenade at the Poxwalkers. D6 shots, five, hitting on threes, re-rolling ones. They all hit. Wounding on fours, three wounds. Disgusting, isn't it? Well, made two, so anyone hey. box walker dies. I'll give this one back. 
And then the Dreadnought will put all of its guns into the Pox Walkers. So I'll start with the Heavy Flamer. D6 automatic hits. That's two. two. Wounding on threes. Two wounds. Uh, oh, no. Oh. Didn't kill him. <laughs> Here's where you're discussing resilience. The Frank Storm grenade launchers get three shots. Hitting on fives, you're running ones. Two hits. Wounding on threes. One wound. Oh, you did kill one. Yeah. 12 shots from the heavy onslaught Gatling cannon. Hitting on fives, you're running ones. Reroll them. Get another hit out of it. Three hits. Wounding on threes. Two wounds. No. <laughs> wow. <laughs> In the charge phase, the chaplain will declare a charge on the Pops Walkers. We've got an eight, that's fine. So he'll come in like this. And then the Reavers will also declare a charge. We've got an eight. So they'll have to come round here to fight over the pipe, which they can do because it's a two inch range for melee. So that's all my charges onto the fight phase. I'll start with the Reavers. They have seven attacks, hitting on threes, we're rolling misses. Yeah, turns into seven hits. Wounding on threes. Only four wounds. Uh, they killed three there. These ones at the back. And they won't consolidate, so the chaplain gets to go next. Four attacks hitting on twos, you're on misses. Four hits. Wounding on threes, because he's strength five. Oh, one wound. Wow. One wound. It's two damage though. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so the Poxwoods get to fight back. Yeah, they'll pile in. These five will attack the Reavers, because they can, and these two can't, so they'll attack the Chaplain. Right. Ten attacks on the Reavers, hitting on sixes. That's two hits. Uh, all those fives that aren't hits. Mm. Wounding on fives. That's a wound. Three plus armor save. Made it. And then four attacks on the Chaplain on sixes. Like another five there. Wounding on a five. Oh, he did. Three plus armor save. Made it. And then, then in the morale phase, the cultists have to make, take a morale test, and they took four casualties. So D6 plus four. That's oh, right, so they, none of them are Yeah, up. go cultists. Yeah. But that'll be the end of my turn, so it's on to Death Guard turn four. So the Poxwalkers have fallen back from melee like that, and then the cultists have consolidated around the objective, pretty much, and then the Plague Burst Caller is not going to move. So on to the shooting phase. We'll start with the cultists, they'll shoot everything at the Reavers. We're going to have... Um, so that's four auto guns, a pistol, and the Storm Bolter. Yeah, so that'll be nine auto gun. Nine strength three shots and four strength four. Yeah, that's hitting fours. Oh wow. Six hits. Wounding on fives. Three. What? Three plus armor saves. Made all of them. And the Storm Walter uh, gets a hit. And it wounds on a four. It did. Three plus. New. Yeah. It takes a wound. Go cut this. At last. <laughs> Put it on the normal man. Uh, the Plague Burst Crawler will shoot the Entropy Cannons at the Dreadnought. Mm -hmm. And so the Entropy Cannons at the Dreadnought and then all the, the other three guns at the Hellblasters. Yep. We'll start with the entropy cannons sitting on fours, rolling ones. Oh, one. Now, now they both hit. Wounding on threes. Uh, it doesn't re roll ones, but that's a wound. Goes through because no armor. Yep. And it does three damage. That's a so dreadnought goes down. On a six, it explodes. It doesn't. Yeah. Oh, my dreadnought. Uh, then the plague, burst, plague mortar. Oh, only one shot. I don't have command point to re roll it. It hits on four. It did. It wounds on a two. Re rolling ones because it's a plague weapon. It wounded. Uh, five plus armor save for the Hellblaster. Made it. Phew. Heavy Slugger on fours, re-rolling ones. Three hits. I uh, can't kill them though. Wounding on threes. Yep, yeah, they were wounded. Four plus armor saves. Made uh, one, killed yeah, one, killed kill two, so the regular Hellblaster will die. Uh, that's it though for my turn. I'm not going to charge with the cultists. So that'll be the end of Death Guard turn four. On to Space Marines turn five. So in my movement phase, the Reavers are going to move up over that pipe, so they're nearer to the Plague Burst Crawler. The Intercessors are going to come down, this is the risky play, I think. And the Hellblaster Sergeant is just going to hide behind that box, so he doesn't get uh, Entropy Cannon to death. And uh, Chapman's going to stay where he is, so with that over, it's on to the shooting phase. And I'll start with the Intercessors, they're going to shoot at the Cultists. Eight shots, hitting on threes. And six hits, wounding on threes. Oh, one wound, so one dead cultist. Wow. Uh, well, we'll lose this guy in the back. Uh, the Reavers will throw a frag grenade at the cult. Uh, one, will, one Reaver will throw a frag grenade at the cultists, and uh, the other one will throw, will fire his pistol at them. So, frag grenade, d6 shots, five. Wounding on threes. Hitting. Hitting on threes, sorry, yeah. Wounding on fours. Three wounds. Six plus armor. Nope, so that's three more. Three dead cultists. And then we have a pistol shot, which 
Missed. And then the chaplain will throw a frag grenade at the Poxwalkers. D6 shots, six. Six attacks, hitting on threes. They all hit. Wounding on fours. Four wounds. Disgusting, you said. Oh dear. Made lost four. Yeah, we'll take those. And this one. So on to the charge phase. I'll start with the Reavers. We'll declare a charge on the Plague Burst Crawler, the Poxwalkers, and the Cultists. Oh, brave. We'll start with the Cultists. Mm. We'll have the Storm Bolter hitting on sixes. I got a hit. Oh. Was on a four. Nope. Phew. And <laughs> auto pistol. And an auto pistol, which missed. Then we'll do the we'll do the heavy slugger from the thing of me. It hits on. Oh, there's, there's a there's a hit. It wounds on a three. It did. Four plus armor save. No. Yeah, Reaver killed, in front dies. Killed the closer one. Uh, I can't shoot the blade burst mortar because he's closer than twelve inches. Yep. And it has a minimum range. But the two entropy cannons on sixes. Nothing. So charge distance will be mm. that one in the box. Oh, that was a three. three, and so it was a nine. Nine. So I think that's going to be enough to get him into contact with the plague burst crawler. Go on, Sarge, you can kill it with your knife. So the chaplain will need to clear a charge on the Poxwalkers. He got an eight, so we'll go around like that. And then the intercessors will charge the Poxwalkers as well. And they got a four, but that's going to be enough. So that's all my charges. And I'll start with the chaplain, I suppose. Four attacks hitting on twos, rerolling everything. They will hit. Wounding on threes. Two wounds. Slightly better than last time. Yeah. Uh, two damage each, that's one dead. Two dead. There's one Poxwalker remaining. And the intercessors will get hit. We'll go next. Nine attacks. Hitting on three, you're rolling misses. Turns into nine hits on the one Poxwalker. Only on threes. So that's six wounds. I think it may be dead, yes it is. So the Poxwalker's wiped out. And finally the Brave Reaver Sergeant's going to attack the Plague Burst Crawler with his combat knife. Four attacks hitting on threes. Yeah, but... Um... He's not within sixes, six inches of the chaplain, so no rerolls. That's only one hit. Yeah, it's a scary big though. Woundy on a six. No. Well, I guess to hit back for what it's worth, it's got three attacks on hitting on sixes. Oh, we got a hit. Oh. Uh, it wounds on a three. It's strength seven. It didn't, and it doesn't have a blade weapon. There we have the morale phase. The coldest took four casualties, and they run away because yeah. his leadership is six. only six. So nine, so three run away, but it's only two left. So the coldists flee, yeah. and that will be the end of Space Marines turn five. On to Death Guard turn 5. Yeah, but I'm going to concede at this point, because I have a Plague Burst Crawler that's engaged in melee, so it can't shoot. It can fall back and that's it. It could fall back and take that objective, which would give me two points, but you've got two for this one, and two for this one over here, and one for Slayer Ball. So that'd be five victory points to two, effectively. So that would be a Space Marine victory. We'll recap that for you now. So that was the mission for issue 52 of Warhammer 40,000 Conquest. How did you think that went? Uh, well, not really that well. Um, a fairly obvious thing is I didn't roll very well, for particularly for the Entropy Cannons yeah. on the Plague Burst Crawler. I think they hit three times out of eight shots, so if they hit more than that, then the Dreadnought might not have been there. But then the Dreadnought didn't do all of your damage, so it's it's only partially. Well, I mean, the main thing would have been stopping me using Wisdom of the Ancients. I think that was the main use of the Dreadnought. Yeah, that's true. You actually benefited from the rerolls from that and from Storm of Fire, actually. Yeah. Both of those things really enhance the efficiency of your shooting. In fact, I think that was quite a good showcase of what the Space Marines can do with their shooting when you had rerolling ones to hit and then mm. extra arm penetration. Those Plague Marines didn't last very long at all. And once they'd gone, actually, it was always going to be an uphill struggle. And Lord Gangrus just got blown away. I think I made several mistakes as well. Um, firstly, not putting the pl- not putting the plague burst crawler within nine inches of the ammo boxes, so it had to move twice before I could, could reroll one its ones to hit because. I had to use blasphemous machines twice to fix it. Although, to be fair, I will say that your deployment zone is smaller than mine. And the pipes and the um, console thing do block off. Yeah, it's true, actually. It was a little bit stifled. Second mistake. Should have re-rolled Lord Gangrus's armor set or invulnerable saves on it. Yeah, maybe he, against the hell blasters. Or he took more damage than he needed to. Then again, I'm, not, I'm sure he would have just died in melee anyway, so it probably didn't matter. Another mistake was not putting the Plague Marines in cover in the beginning. Well, they only lost one model, but in theory that was still a bad thing to do because I thought they'd be far enough away to be out of range, but they weren't. Rather than have the cultists trying to hold that back objective, I should have moved them up with the pox walkers and then used the blade burst crawler to move and take the objective in my corner. Yeah, and I think probably actually just sending Gangrus in by himself. I should have actually, I think what I should have done is kept him behind the box yeah, rather forced, than charge him in. Forced me to come to him. And the Dreadnought couldn't actually, probably couldn't, oh, it would have been difficult to reach in there because yeah, the base is so large. Stuff in the way. 
Well, the same thing happened to him that happened to Lord Felthy in the previous game, really. I sent him in by himself and he got blown away. That I mean, I didn't roll very well for his armour and vulnerable saves. And his disgusting resilience. And disgusting resilience, even on the 4+. plus. I didn't roll very well for that at all. Yeah, so it didn't go brilliant, but there are a few mistakes I made that, you know, in hindsight, I wish I hadn't done. There you go. That's my assessment, I suppose. Yeah, once you lost the Plague Marines in Gangrus. I'm not really afraid of cultists or pox walkers. Well, losing the Plague Marines actually, I guess, was another mistake because I should have probably arranged my forces better so that I could have used Cloud of Flies. The cultists and the pox walkers just cannot do any damage. Yeah, you can see that the cultists may have been able to deal with scouts fairly easily, but they, I think they did one wound all game. Their own, the only thing going for them is they have a lot of shots or attacks if you actually send them in, just because there are so many yeah. of them. But then uh, their poor morale came into light as well. I mean, yeah, maybe one, away. but still. Yeah. I think the fact you went first was significant as well, because it meant didn't force Gangrus back too, back too much, really, but it just meant you were on top of the objectives. So I had to push you off, and I just couldn't get enough forces even, close enough to do that. Yeah, even though I, I... I mean, I fell back a bit to try and... So that if you, hit, you did charge with Gangrus, it would have been hard. I mean, you yeah. got in anyway, but then he was on his own. Yeah. Again, well, mind main problem is, again, can't do too much about your Plague Burst Crawler. I mean, I got into melee with it at the end with my one yeah. Reaver, just to guarantee the win. But yeah, the mortar being able to shoot anything so you can't hide behind the box, kind of annoying to deal with. Kind of didn't get to see much of the new stratagem, so we might as well talk about them. I mean, you used um, Blasphemous Machines, which does work. The only vehicle you have that it would apply to is the Plague Burst Crawler, on the Rhino technically, but... Yeah, I wouldn't use on the Rhino. Yeah. And as I said, actually, my poor deployment meant I had to use that twice, so mm. we might have seen another strategy if I hadn't done that. Cloud of Flies is actually really good. I mean, you put it on something like Plague Marines. If you'd gone first, you could have put Cloud of Flies on them. Yeah, and then I would essentially would have been, uh, nope, you can't shoot them, you yeah. have to shoot Boxwalkers, because you just can't shoot them. It's not allowed. And it was really my poor position yeah. that meant I couldn't use it. So I should, we should have seen that one, really, if I'd been playing better. That also works really well with the, the dead live again. So one really good use for cultists is you get a squad of poxwalkers, you put cloud of flies on it, and then you use the dead walk again as well and put a unit of cultists in front of the poxwalkers so that when the cultists get shot at, they become poxwalkers. Yeah. Unfortunately, we're kind of limited because we only have 12 poxwalker models. So we will get yeah. more eventually. But Yeah, because it can take the poxwalkers above their starting strength. Yeah. But Exit, so can their curse of the walking pox. But again, we're limited yeah. by the number of models. Uh, when that happens, maybe that strategy will be useful more because we'll just have We'll have more models to put down. Yeah. And then you had, what was it, Putrid Explosion? Putrid Detonation, Detonation which you weren't likely to kill the Blade Burst Crawler, but it might, I might, you might see that used with, say, the Rhino or the um, uh, the Bloat Drone, if they end up in yeah, well, the far f- forward. If- it, it's, only a, it's only a few mortal wounds, but it could make a difference. And then Chaos Familiar of Nurgle, it only applies if I have a Psychic, and it would only apply if I decided during the game that I had picked the wrong Psychic power. And Or, or I guess, there was a situation where I really wanted that Psychic power, but it's a command point to change your Psychic power, which... Yeah. I mean, it, it's a usable one, but... Uh, it's usable, but it's not going to come up that often with the things. And we might as well go over my ones as well. So Wisdom of the Ancients we saw is really good. Yeah. So yeah, you can overcharge Hellblaster shots. I rolled a lot of ones for shooting. That got yeah, me rolled. Yeah. So that worked out quite well. And uh, it can be used in the fight phase as well, but I had the Chaplain, so he already yeah. does that, but better. And then we have Signs of Gilliman. I mean, Wisdom of the Ancients is probably better because it applies to everyone rather than a single unit. Armor of Contempt. I mean, the only thing you had that did mortal wounds in this game was Gangrus's uh, aura and the uh, the Plague Burst Crawler exploding. I mean, I guess Armor of Contempt could be useful like, if you have a Saga. Yeah, it's only on 5 plus that still, yeah. so it's, it's not it's that still, reliable. It's not, it's not a wow stratagem. Uh, Hellfire Shells, uh, that will only apply to the Scout with Heavy Bolter. But other than that, I mean, it's all right. Well, again, against Death Guard, mortal wounds are good. And uh, Death to the Traitors is uh, essentially um, Death to the False Emperor. Yeah, but for Space Marines. But for Space Marines. command point. Yeah. Uh, I was planning to use that on Gangrus if I failed to kill him with shooting, but I did, so... <laughs> you didn't see it. <laughs> but it'd be really good with units like Reavers. I mean, it works quite well with Primaris because we have so many attacks in melee. If the Reavers are at full strength and they charge in, they've got, what, 16 attacks yeah. or something. So it stacked really well with the Chaplain as well because yeah. you're re-rolling. Yeah. So that's quite a good strategy in my opinion. Yeah. They, they are, they are both, both sides get a selection from the full codex and some of the selections are a little bit peculiar. Like you kind of think, well, why would I ever use that? But they are all usable, as you said. So I mean, some of them stand out much more than others. Well, I don't think there's too much more to say about this mission. So if you like this content, please leave a like and subscribe. And if you've been playing along, leave a comment. What did you think about this scenario? What did you think about our tactics, that sort of thing? We've been the Tabletop Donkeys, and we'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Goodbye.